We all know that Alzheimer's is a very serious disease, but some new research is coming to light that might help detect it earlier on. The FDA has now approved a blood test that helps detect biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease. Experts are saying it significantly increases opportunities for early detection and treatment. Here to help us kind of understand how all of this is working and how it could benefit you and your loved ones, Dr. William Buduris from the Michigan Institute for Neurological Disorders. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. This is kind of a big deal, especially if uh, there's a family history of Alzheimer's. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me join, Nick. I appreciate that. So uh, this is a big breakthrough. Um, we do have a few biomarkers out there. This one in particular, Lumipulse, was just approved last month by the FDA for uh, testing people with mild memory loss, 55 and older. So what exactly is it looking for? Because forgive me, I'm not a doctor nor a scientist. So how, how can you figure this out? No, it's a very good question. So the hallmark findings in somebody with Alzheimer's is they have abnormal protein in their brain, two specifically, beta amyloid and another protein called tau. And what this blood test is able to do is it's able to calculate the ratio of amyloid and tau. And it seems to correlate pretty well with PET scans and spinal fluid as far as predictive value of Alzheimer's. Now, how far can you go? I mean, we're talking about earlier uh, detection here. How early? So the, the blood test itself is for anybody 55 and older who exhibits any cognitive impairment, and that could be very mild. The key with this disease process is we know people are living with Alzheimer's well before they manifest clinically. And so we want to get people into the office and get evaluated as soon as possible when they start exhibiting mild cognitive impairment. For the longest time, this has been one of those things that we've just lived with because there hasn't been any great treatment for it. And now we're starting to turn the page on that. What do you think this early detection does for treatment? Well, I think that you're right. This is a very exciting time. We as neurologists have been prescribing the same medicines for many years now that frankly are suboptimal. And um, we're starting to get into some new intravenous medicines now that are actually able to remove the amyloid plaque out of the brain. And the way that we're getting closer and closer to being able to put people on these medications is we're doing testing, spinal taps, PET scans. Uh, these are expensive. Sometimes there's accessibility issues with them. So this is, uh, this is really groundbreaking information with this lab test. You know, hopefully we can continue to see more and more development of biomarkers because being able to screen people with these blood tests is gonna be very helpful. So you talked about removing the plaque. Are we talking about a cure here or just slowing down the progression? Yeah, we're not there yet. So there's, there's no cure. I mean, I will tell you there's, there's quite a few medications in the pipeline. So I think we are just starting to see a breakthrough in the new medications. But the ultimate, right now, the ultimate goal is getting people diagnosed early, removing the plaque, and hopefully what we see over time is stabilization and slowing, slowing progression, frankly, until there is a cure. So you don't have to give me the numbers, but I know you've been doing this for quite some time now. Um, how, how big of a deal this is? Kind of put it in perspective for me. You, well, okay, we all know that, you know, with good primary care management, people are living longer and longer. Um, you know, roughly six plus million people in the United States with Alzheimer's, 55 million worldwide. And frankly, if you look at the statistics, you're talking about the numbers doubling in the next 25 years. Mm. Huge impact. Uh, if I am a patient or a family member who has someone they love that is struggling with this. What's your advice if they're watching this and saying, I, I need this blood test or I, I wanna get tested, what do you tell them? You're talking about somebody that has symptoms? Or somebody that uh, has already been diagnosed, well, I guess if you've been diagnosed, you don't need the biomarkers, but yes, if Correct. you have symptoms. Well, I think w we should know soon. You know, The FDA approved this last month so as of right now, we don't know exactly what this is going to cost. We don't know exactly what the insurance companies, when they'll approve it. Um, but I think that, um, you know, once we have that piece of information, it will certainly be something that we will have conversations with of, of patients, um, you know, besides the other testing that we do. Yeah. Uh, 
what's your best guess on a timeline? Again, you've, you've been doing this for long enough to kind of give me an educated guess here from once something is FDA approved to actually available for patients. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we're hoping in the next couple months. Oh, wow. Okay. That's phenomenal. I did want to ask you, I've got you here. You are involved in a field here. I know you do so much more uh, things outside of Alzheimer's, but this is what we're talking about right now. It has to be incredibly frustrating for someone like you who's dedicated your entire professional career to something like this, and still we don't have a cure. We're getting closer, but not there yet. It is very frustrating. Um, obviously, you feel terrible for the patients, but you know the, the other part of this that we frankly, always seem to forget is the caregivers, right? Mm -hmm. Because the caregivers are under immense stress as well. And the financial impact on families is staggering. Uh, and one last question for you. I'm sure somebody watching this is, has a loved one with Alzheimer's. What's your best advice for working with them? Because the progression will happen eventually. How do you not get frustrated yourself and just kind of keep having whatever conversations they are over and over again? You do, you get very frustrated, you try to stay positive, you make sure that they have avenues for resources, support groups, local chapters of the Alzheimer's Society. Um, family support's huge, looking at day programs for people, uh, ultimately looking at more structured living environment, you know, as progression occurs. But you are correct, it's, it's a very, difficult and, and frankly devastating right. disease. But you, you feel guilty feeling frustrated at the same time. You do. You do. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Dr. Bernard, thank you so much for your time this morning. And really, we can't wait to see what this is going to look like in a few months for patients. We agree. Thank you for having me. Take care.